Welcome back, everyone, to Bird Talk with Terrence Mathis. I'm your host, William Brandon. This week's episode will discuss State of the Falcons, recap the Super Bowl, and throwbacks with Terrence. So let's get right to it. Now that the NFL season is officially over, NFL teams are transitioning to the offseason. Some players take a vacation. Others continue to work on their craft. NFL front offices, I'm sure they never stop working because your free agency is right around the corner, and before you know it, we'll be at the NFL draft. Yes. Terrence, from a player's perspective, what would you be doing after the season is done? Well, for, for me, if I'm not in the playoffs whatsoever, you know, I'm taking that time off. I'm, I'm traveling, spending time with the family, just doing some things, not really – you know, just letting the body heal a little bit. I usually, the Monday after the Super Bowl, get right back to training again. That was my regimen. And if I was in the playoffs, I'd take a little bit longer. But usually, which I wouldn't the playoffs a lot. So I would be <laughs> right after the Monday after the Super Bowl because that that game, that last game, is it motivates you to say, I want to be there. So that next morning, I'm usually up and right back at it, training, getting ready for the next season. Would you be like uh, training with other teammates or? No, um, I, I, I'd be by myself, you know, and, and my trainers. You know, at one point I had I had a, <laughs> I had a couple of trainers. At one point I had a, a, a lifting trainer and I, and I had a speed trainer. So uh, I was doing that twice a day. I was lifting in the mornings, running in the afternoons. And I was just trying to get my body ready and get mentally ready to for the long season and uh, just trying to get the body back healthy again. How many hours do you think you might spend on that? A day? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're looking, we're, we're probably looking at four or five hours a day. Okay. Uh, two hours in the morning, two hours in the, in the afternoon whatsoever. And then, you know, maybe 30 minutes in between there uh, doing some other things, stretching, flexibility stuff. But yeah, two hours a day early. Early, I'm in the gym by 7.30 in the morning, out by 9.30, 10, then at the track at 3 o'clock. So, okay. And that was my routine for, for a long time. Wow, wow. So let, let's try to kind of switch gears. If you're the GM of the Falcons and the season just ended, how is it different? What, what would you be doing in that? Well, I, I hopefully, the, if, if you're the GM for the Falcons, you didn't start working on Monday after the Super Bowl. I hope you was working prior to that. But, you know, now that the Super Bowl is over with, it should motivate you to put together a, a product uh, that can get to the Super Bowl, Super Bowl 56. And the thing is, you got a lot of work to do here in Atlanta. You know, you're up against the salary cap. You got to, you know, you got your... Your big time safety count on Neil, you have to resign. I think he's going to be an unrestricted free agent this year. Um, you have issues at the running back position. And, and right now there's a guy, uh, Marlon Mack in Indianapolis, that's available. Um, four year guy. So he's still young. He started strong. He got hurt. Uh, he's healthy now. But, you know, Indianapolis got two fine young running backs right now. So there's no room for him. But you still got to pick. You still got to fix your salary cap problem. You got to got to move some guys around. You got to let some guys go, and hopefully you can renegotiate with some guys to, to give you some calorie calorie set um, cap space. Uh, you know, and then you're looking at your you're looking at your first round pick at number four. That's a very very expensive pick, especially if it's a quarterback. So is is what are you going to do? Do you do do you want to you want to spend that money in the fourth round in the fourth pick of the first round or do you want to move down or even move out of the first round um, to get more picks because you're gonna have to find a way to get some money to pay some people to build this build this franchise the way you want it to be built. Yeah, definitely. And the running back position, you're definitely right about that. That's a hole that needs to be filled. And as you said, the Colts they have Jonathan Taylor and Max. So yeah. Uh, I'm sure he'll be expendable at this point. Uh, let's, you know, like I said, end of the season wouldn't be here without last Sunday's Super Bowl. Yes. Oh, my God. You know <laughs> what? Um, something wasn't right about that game. Mm -hmm. Just didn't feel, you know, even going into the game, it didn't feel like a Super Bowl. You know, the the anticipation and, and, the, and the excitement around the Super Bowl, I guess because of COVID, yeah. uh, took a little steam out of it. But it just didn't, the game itself just didn't feel right. 
you know, um, like it or not, um, the referees played an important part. Penalties played an important part in that first half of that game that led to points. Um, you know, you can say, well, you know, they this, 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 they were holding this and that. You're just a Kansas City. No, I'm a football fan. This is what I am. I'm a football fan. And on certain things, you just got to let the guys play. Because if you look at the AFC championship game, the NFC championship game, they let those guys play. Then you get to the Super Bowl, and in the first half, the penalties that were called, yeah, they were penalties, but they, but they were penalties that you could say, well, they didn't really affect the play at all. Mm-hmm. So uh, right away, it you know, I thought Kansas City – didn't come back, come out with any enthusiasm. I didn't think they matched the intensity of the Buccaneers. It was like they was just out there. And it just it just didn't feel right. It just felt like Kansas City wasn't in it. I thought, you know, as a former player, as a as a coach, as a former offensive coordinator, I'm looking at uh, what Kansas City did from the beginning. You know, they tried to throw the ball against what we say, two high safeties. Mm-hmm. When there's two high safeties, that means they don't have enough guys in the box to stop the run. So I thought they should have ran the ball more and to bring one of those safeties up. Now you're able to throw the football, but they played right into Tampa Bay's hand. Todd Bowles, the defensive coordinator for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, done a, did an excellent job preparing for the Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah, um, just in case you were under a rock, the Atlanta Falcons division rival, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers did win Super Bowl 55 on Sunday yeah. Yeah. by defeating the defending champion Kansas City Chiefs in convincing fashion, 31 to 9. Yeah. That was Tampa's second Super Bowl. So you have Tampa yeah. with two, New Orleans with one, and Atlanta and Carolina without any. Yeah. Um, I know you were speaking about it as, as a wide receiver, and they should have let them play more. In today's game, and, and when you played, do you see a huge difference in the calls that are being called against uh, wide receiver and the corners? Oh, it's 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 a huge difference, a huge difference. Some of those calls wouldn't have been called. Some holding calls whatsoever. Um, when when a guy is bumping and running, that just wouldn't be called illegal contact. That wouldn't have been called in our day. Um, I'm not saying it was is bad or better or worse, but you know, it's not fun. It's not fun to watch when, when when that happens and all those penalties, especially on those type of plays, when you call a penalty that's away from the play that didn't affect the play. Yeah, that's a problem. You call a holding penalty penalty or illegal contact penalty on the other side of the field when the ball was thrown over here incomplete. That is just not that's not good. It's not good for the game. I'm sorry. It's not good for the game. Oh, I agree with you. I feel like there should have been. Uh, more letting the guys play, so to speak, um, and not letting it be decided by key penalties on third down, even on a, um, an offsides that was critical yeah. On, yeah. on a fourth down field goal. Well, you know, I don't want to sit here and take away what Tampa Bay did. Tampa mm. Bay had a great game plan. Tom Brady got, what was it, number seven? Was it number yeah. seven? Seven um, Super Bowl win. You know, uh, Antonio Brown got his. You know, so it was, you know, it was nice. It was, it was really nice. You know, you look at it and how, I don't care how much you hate Tom Brady. I don't care. Mm -hmm. Seven Super Bowls. Pretty much he's what, at a a 50% clip going to the Super Bowl over the 22 years he's been in the league or whatsoever. So every other year, like he's in the Super Bowl. That's that's what it seems like. It does. Oh my God. It's, it's just an amazing feat. I got it. You know, my hat's off to him. He's literally had a Super Bowl victory in the last three decades. Yes. 2000, 2010s, and now the 2020s. Do you think there's anything else he can do to add to his legacy? No. No. I, I, you know, honestly, you know, this is one of those things I hope we don't see happen, that he comes back and he's a shell of himself. Yeah. Because that's all you're gonna remember, you know. Mm-hmm. Think about that's that's all you can that's all you're gonna remember. You you know. Think about this. You have you have guys like uh, Adrian Peterson who was phenomenal in Minnesota, but now we just think about Adrian Adrian Peterson and what he's been over the last couple of years. 
Yeah. And that's unfair to him. You see what I'm saying? That's really unfair to him. You know, we, we look at Jerry Rice where he jumped from, you went to the Raiders then that last year in Seattle. And, it, you know, it's, you know, when you're the greatest at your position of all times, that's how you want to be remembered. You know, we, we look at Michael Jordan. The, the thing about Michael Jordan, even though he played with the Wizards, Nobody talks about that because all you remember is the greatness he did in the Bulls. And when he did play for the Wizards, he did some amazing things that his last game, I think he's, he, I forgot that he scored 30 plus points or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, Or or he had, uh, all he had to do was another two points to get 30 or 40 or whatever it is. And he took himself out the game and he got a a standing applause. And that's what we remember Mike as, a classy classy, classy, class act uh, of a man and as a basketball player that he said, those points don't matter. I'm going to bow out with grace. Yeah, And I think, I hope Tom Brady does the same thing. I know this, uh, I, I don't know if you saw the clip yesterday of the, the parade celebration, the boat parade. What did you think of Tom throwing the trophy over the water? <laughs> oh, man. Well, Tom probably had a little bit too much to drink. It's okay. <laughs> you won a Super Bowl. You won seven. You deserve it. Yeah. You know, hey, you know, me, I think that's a disrespect to the trophy. You know, um, you know, guys who who want to be able to hold the trophy, he'd held it, he's held it seven to six times before that. So it really, to him, it was just, ah, it's just another, yeah, another it's just, one. <laughs> it's just another one. For me, I'm like, <gasps> <laughs> So that's how I felt. It was like, <gasps> <laughs> and that's what I was thinking. I was like, clearly, you know, he's he's won so many that to him, it's 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 just another thing to him. Right. <laughs> it's right. like getting dressed. Right. right. Exactly. Exactly. All right. So uh, now it's time for one of my favorite segments of the show, Terrence's Throwbacks, where we take a trip down memory lane. Uh, what do you got for us this week? I'm going to go way back. I'm going to go way, 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 way back to 1990. My rookie year with the New York Jets. We're playing the Dallas Cowboys in October. And uh, they're, they're owing whatever at the time. And, and I'm returning punts. So the first punt that was kicked to me, I caught it. Um, made somebody miss and ran into the back of one of my teammates. And then when you do that, there's usually a pile up. And it took a while for for them to hit me and I kind of scooted off and then I got tackled. I went to the sideline and I told the special teams coach, I said, I'm scoring a day. I'm scoring a day. He just said, well, just whatever. Just, just make sure you catch the ball. So the second time I lined up out there on the punt return, coach said, move over, move over to, he says, move to your right, move to your, no, he said, move to your left, move to your left, move to your left, move to your left. So the punter kicked it to the right and I couldn't get it. And I was like, oh, that could have been my chance. <laughs> so the third time we went out there, I said, okay, he, I'm going to move to my right. So as the ball was snapped, I started scooting to the right, and he kicked it to the left. <laughs> so I started sprinting to go get it. It was a high punt, and I caught it, and I looked down, and I seen the end zone. And I said, oh, you know, you're not supposed to catch the ball inside the 10-yard line. Yeah. And I'm looking down and going, oh, no. I didn't say, oh, no. You know what I said. Yeah. I said oh, yeah. I turned around, and I swear to you, it opened up like the Red Sea. And I went, whew, 98 yards, untouched, <laughs> for a punt return for a touchdown. At the time, it was an NFL record, and it's still a New York Jets record. Oh, and that wow. was my, my rookie year, and that was my – Doctrination to the NFL. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's amazing. I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, at this point, um, what we can do is go ahead and look over some clips from the Super Bowl celebration. Right. Yeah. And kind of uh, give us a breakdown on what you see and maybe what maybe, you know, I don't know if that's what you felt in the NFC Championship or maybe what could have been. But you can kind of give us on on what that what that might be. Let's okay. see here. You know, uh, it, it, it's it's funny because you know an NFC Championship game, you, you you celebrate it. You know, and that was two weeks prior to the Super Bowl. 
and you wanted that feeling again. And then I remember watching this um, in Super Bowl 33 after the Denver Broncos beat us. And it was one of those surreal moments like it could have been us. And it was like, it could have been me, you know, sitting up there holding a the trophy. And as you see, you can see Tom Brady off to the right a little bit and up there on the podium for the, there we go, for the seventh time raising the trophy. And, and it's funny because as that ticker tape is, is falling right there, you kind of realize that that's it. The season is over with. There's no more football. There's no more next week. There's no more Monday meetings. Then there's no more game planning. There's nothing. There's your teammates. There's no more camaraderie for a while. And um, it's just, it's, it's a, it's a empty feeling knowing that, you know, you, you start up July 27th and you end in February and you go, wow, we've been together all that time and, and you miss it. But then that you wake up the next morning and it's time to go back to work. <laughs> so, you know, congratulations to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and for Tom Brady winning his seventh Super Bowl. Amazing, amazing feat. Yeah, I, I think that's going to be uh, tough to beat. You know, I doubt in my lifetime I'll ever see anyone win more than seven Super Bowls. Right. It's going to be wild. Um, I want to thank everybody again for always joining us. Remember to tune in every Friday for new episodes right here at Atlanta Sports Unlimited. Got anything to tell them, Terrence? Hey, just keep your head up, keep moving. Don't let anybody stand in your way. They stand in your way, you push them to the side and say, excuse me, I got places to go. <laughs> keep on moving. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Y'all have a good day. All right. Have a good one.